Books have the ability to change lives, and for me, the book would be Speaker of the Dead by the author Orson Scott Card. Uh, this quote from Andrew Wigan, I think it's impossible to really understand somebody, what they want, what they believe, and not love them the way they love themselves. Uh, it's a great quote. When in middle school and high school, uh, I was often an outcast. People didn't find me appealing, I guess. I don't know. Um, and so I often resented people for not liking me, uh, but I also didn't understand why they didn't like me. Uh, possibly I may have offended them without knowing it, and that caused them to not like me, because first impressions are very important. And this book uh, allowed me to forgive them for not liking me or even bullying me. Um, and I also hope that if they read this book, that they would also forgive others that had wronged them. So today I will be talking about forgiveness and the path to a less stressful life. So to start off with, I will be discussing why forgiveness is important, how to actually forgive someone, uh, how to keep your amount of forgiveness balanced because you can forgive too often and you can forgive not enough. And I'll even guide you through a small forgiveness exercise. Here's my humorous illustration that was required for the speech. Why forgiveness is important? Well, to, first we need to define forgiveness, and according to Mayo Clinic, generally forgiveness is a decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. One of the major things that unforgiveness grudges can lead to is stress, and some of the major symptoms of stress include headaches, nausea, pain in muscles and chest, and trouble sleeping. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't enjoy headaches, nausea, pain in any sort, and I enjoy my sleep. So. We all need to be more forgiving. Some of the benefits of forgiveness includes reduced stress and anxiety. Although stress is good in certain amounts, we can't be too stressed. Uh, it helps build healthier relationships. People are likely to enjoy your company more if you forgive them for their past actions, whether small or big. Uh, it boosts your immune system. No one enjoys being sick unless they have a speech to give and they don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, it amplifies your self-esteem. Everyone needs to love themselves every now and then. And it also decreases the amount of depression symptoms. Uh, depression is a major mental disorder, and any help of getting rid of it is much appreciated. The drawbacks of holding grudges, the opposite of forgiving, is it increases chances of for, uh, depression. Obviously, if forgiveness de in, uh, decreases, that grudges would increase. Uh, it prevents you from enjoying the world in front of you. You can't be happy about the things you're doing, whether you're in amusement park or simply at school, if you're always mad about things that have already happened and you cannot control. Also, grudges follow you anywhere you go into every experience and relationship. Going into relationships, whether it be a boyfriend, girlfriend, just friends, or even with a teacher, if you're already mad, you'll give off a bad impression and they are likely to give off that you are an unlikable person and may not want to spend time with you. So. How do we forgive? Well, according to Leo Gura, who is a life coach and speaker who has over 100 hours of videos, uh, says there are two types of forgiveness. There is full forgiveness and half-hearted forgiveness. The difference is half-hearted forgiveness is you just forget, whereas full forgiveness, as stated in his second one, is the only way to truly forgive is to let incident go and to move on from it. Whether you forget it or not, you also need to move on from it because there's no way you can change it or they can change it. Forgiveness is a conscious decision that you have to make personally. No one can make it for you. And you also need to think about when forgiving a person, is that the person's actions forgivable? In my opinion, every action is forgivable to an extent. Uh, you can, if they did something that is really bad, you may not forgive them for what they did, but you can forgive them for being human, because we all make mistakes. And the major key to forgiveness is to let go of resentments, respond with kindness, because treat others the way you would want to be treated. You don't want to hit anger with anger, because then that would just create more anger. And you also uh, can't keep living in the past. And so, how to keep it balanced. You don't want to forgive people right away because then they will think that, or if you get into the habit of instant forgiveness, everyone will think you'll forgive them for anything and they will walk all over you. 
You also need to be careful with forgiving yourself. Forgiving others is good, but be careful with forgiving yourself because forgiving yourself does not remove you of your guilt. Take responsibility for your actions. Uh, if you did something wrong, you need to make up for it. You can't just assume that they'll be okay with it and you can move on. Um, as quoted by Psychology Today, just as you probably wouldn't forgive someone else until they make it up to you in some way, forgiving yourself may be most beneficial when you feel like you're actually earned it. You need to earn your own self-forgiveness. Uh, for example, with this speech, I procrastinated thanks to the Thanksgiving break. I enjoy food and spending time with family and did not want to work on school. So I do not forgive myself at the moment, but I will eventually come to terms of what I did, learn from it, and hopefully not procrastinate in the future. So uh, let's do a group exercise of forgiving. Louise on me, I've never done this kind of thing before. I hope uh, this would meet the creativity requirement. <laughs> I want you all to think of someone that has wronged you in the past, whether it be something small or big. They may have cut you off while driving on the highway. Uh, they may have taken the last Snickers bar from the vending machine. Or giving you a bad grade. <laughs> <laughs> or giving you a bad grade. Now I want you to swap roles. You are now that person and you have offended someone else. Would you want them to forgive you as you need to forgive them? With this, you should all realize that forgiveness is important because uh, it helps relationships. You don't want to be at ends with everyone and be angry all the time because then that will just increase your stress levels and they might not even care if they cut you off or not. So why be worried about that all the time in the future? So what you need to do is forgive them. It'll help decrease the amount of stress that they have caused you, and with moving on, uh, you will hopefully live a happier life. So if you're still bitter after that, I'm sorry, I did my best. <laughs> I've never done this before. Uh, so in summary, hopefully all of you have reduced your stress levels so we can reflect on what we've learned. We should all be more forgiving because it can reduce stress, which has many benefits and grudges. Uh, have many withdrawals or drawbacks. Hopefully, we can get rid of those. Um, the steps in order to forgive is we need to let go, and then we also need to move on. Simply letting go, but still thinking about it, will uh, keep your stress levels at the same time they were when the event happened. And you also need to balance when to forgive, because everything is forgivable to an extent, and you also need to be careful when forgiving yourself, because if you forgive yourself too much, you'll end up going overboard. So please, find someone that has wronged you, or someone that you have wronged, and embrace the power of forgiveness.